Hello students and welcome to this video of 5.1. In this video, we're going to start to apply the extreme value theorem to actually find absolute maximums and minimums of one function. So let's get started. So we're gonna be using this function negative x cubed minus six x squared minus nine x plus two, uh, pretty much for this entire video, but we're gonna be looking at a couple other problems as well. So when we start this, we want to determine where the intervals where f is increasing and decreasing. So in order to do that, what you want to remember is, okay, we're going to be finding increasing and decreasing. So we need that first derivative, okay? Um, so we're going to go negative 3x squared minus 12x minus 9. What I want to do is set this equal to 0, but I can see that it's going to be factored. So I'm going to factor out a negative 3, and I'm going to get um, x squared plus 4x plus 3. And then I can set this factor, so negative 3x plus 3 and x plus 1. Setting that equal to 0, I get x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 1 right there. So what I want to do now is make my handy dandy sign chart so that I can actually uh, find increasing and decreasing intervals. So let's start that out. And I'm just going to be using this to go from negative three to negative one. So I'm gonna note first that since I have that negative three in front here, so I'm talking about this negative three right there, I'm gonna note that everything in these intervals is going to start with the negative, because I don't wanna forget that that exists. So then I'm gonna use a value less than negative three, so that's gonna be negative five, and this all comes out to be negative and negative. So it all comes out to be negative, which means we are decreasing. So now I'm gonna, in that second interval, I'm gonna be using negative two, and um, I, it's going to come out to be positive, negative, and so that's all positive, so positive, and that means we are increasing. And then finally, it's going to be negative, positive, positive, any value greater than negative one, and this all comes out to be negative, which means we are decreasing. So where are points where we're increasing and decreasing? Let's write those intervals down. So I am going to be increasing from negative three to negative one, and I am going to be decreasing from negative infinity to negative three union of negative one to infinity. So using a lot of this information, what we wanna do is actually start to determine the coordinates of the relative extrema for f, okay. So from negative infinity to negative three. So we know that we have things happening at negative three and negative one. So if we look at our sign chart, we know that we are changing from decreasing to increasing at negative three. So that means we're gonna have a relative minimum. So let's write down, we have a relative minimum at x equals negative three. We know this because, and you should be remembering this from other modules that we've gone from, but we know this because f prime of x changes from negative to positive. So let's find the actual coordinate, because that's what we actually need. We need to determine the coordinates. So when you actually substitute in that negative three into that original function there, what you're going to do is um, that original function f, you're gonna substitute negative three and you're going to get out a two. All right, so that means that we have a relative minimum at negative three comma two. So now what we're going to do is we're going to write down, we do have a relative maximum, okay? So looking at that sign chart, we have a maximum at x equals negative one. So we're gonna write down, we have a relative maximum at x equals negative one. And we know this is happening at negative one because f prime of x changes from positive to negative, okay? So again, we're gonna do that same thing where we're going to go and find the original function f at negative one, and that comes out to be six. So we have a coordinate at negative one comma six, and we know that that's going to be a relative maximum, relative extrema. So now taking some of that information, we're going to be um, identifying, here's the graph, right? There is the graph of f of x. And what we wanna do is look at this on the closed interval from negative four, so right here, from negative four to positive one, so over here. Okay, so that's the graph right there. 
What we first want to do here is identify the absolute maximum on the closed interval from negative four to negative one. So notice that's, that's negative one, so we're gonna actually close it off here, right up there. Okay, so what's the absolute maximum? Well, it's a shared maximum. We have an absolute maximum at negative four comma six and negative one comma six. Now again, on that same interval, we wanna find the absolute minimums. So we have an absolute minimum at negative three comma two. So an absolute minimum on just this, just this part, that's all we're looking at. So that absolute minimum is happening right there. So it's only like, ignore the rest of it, just look at the absolute minimum. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we want to identify the absolute maximum of F on that closed interval from all the way from negative four to positive one. So now we can actually look all the way over here at positive one now. Um, we want to identify the absolute maximum. And since nothing else has really changed in this graph, we still have the shared absolute maximum at negative four comma six and at negative one comma six. So we do want to notate that, but our absolute minimum has changed. So our absolute minimum has changed and it's all the way over here at this end point. So our absolute minimum is going to be one comma negative 14 at that end point. So now I'm going to show you, okay, so we've had a graphical representation here. So now what I'm going to show you guys is how to actually do this kind of like algebraically. So we, we are going to do some calculus work, but then we're going to do some algebraic analysis to do the same thing that we just did here with this graph, but we're gonna do it where we're actually writing out some values and making some comparisons. You're gonna notice that it's essentially the exact same thing. So what I'm gonna do here is on this interval from negative four to negative one, uh, I'm just gonna rewrite f prime of x. I'm gonna rewrite it in the factored form, negative three x plus three x minus one. And sorry, x plus one, I think it was. We're gonna set that equal to zero, and um, we're gonna write, okay, so x equals negative three, and x equals negative one. So I'm, I'm gonna keep in mind this interval. And what I want to do is I want to write out my, the endpoints of my interval, and I want to write out those relative extreme of values as well. So I wanna find, okay, what is f of negative four equal to? What is f of negative three equal to? What is f of negative one? equal to, and then that just happens to be an endpoint as well. So we're gonna be comparing those three values. So what this means is we're looking at the relative extrema and the endpoints, because there's no points here where anything's undefined, so we actually don't need to look there in this case, because we have a polynomial function. So what's gonna happen here is the absolute maximum is gonna be the maximum of any of those values, and the absolute minimum is gonna be the minimum of any of those values. So let's write those out. So f of negative four, if you substitute that into the original function, you're gonna get six. f of negative three, you substitute that in, and you're gonna get two. f of negative one, you're gonna substitute negative one in, and you're gonna get six. And you're gonna notice that these values actually concur with what we did on the previous page when we were looking at the graph. So what is the absolute max? Well, the absolute max here is, again, occurring at negative four, six, and again here at negative one, six. And we wanna find the absolute minimum here as well, and that is occurring at negative three comma two. So from our analysis, we have determined that there is no point lower than two and there is no point greater than six. So that comparison, this chart right here, that is telling us everything that we need to know about the maximum and minimum values. So now let's also extend that over here to um, this interval from negative four to positive one this time. And so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get those endpoints. So we want f of negative four. We've already done a lot of this work. We've done, uh, so we want f of negative three. We have a relative extrema happening at f of negative one. And we also want to include that final endpoint f of one in this case. So let's write down our, our values. So these haven't changed. So six, two, six, and then you substitute one into the original function and you're going to get negative 14. So we're making a comparison here using the extreme value theorem. We're making a comparison 
and we're going to be able to say what the absolute max and min are. So the absolute max, again, has not changed. Those are still occurring at negative four, six, and negative one, six. But the absolute minimum in this case has changed, and that is occurring at one comma negative 14. And so you do want to make note of that, that those are values that are changing. So I know in this video that we've actually only looked at one problem, but what you want to take into account is that this comparison that you're doing with this little table where you're finding the endpoints and those relative extrema and you're just making simple comparisons that's a lot of what you're doing so you just need to remember that relative extrema we've been doing for a while now all you're adding in are the endpoints and you make that comparison to find absolute extrema in our next video we're going to be looking at where some where the EVT extreme value theorem may not apply in certain situations and it's just because uh, functions may or may not be continuous across the domain that we're looking at so I'll see you in that video of course if you do need any help in this video if, if any of this doesn't make any sense if you're not able to make these comparisons or you're not getting the same values as me please reach out to me I'm Mr. Hernandez and this was Mr. Hernandez teaches.